Today we are going to talk about color schemes. I want to explain what they are and how they can benefit your painting. Okay, today we are looking at color schemes, uh, why they're important, you know, the benefit of using color schemes, and what they are. I want to go over what what they are, the different color schemes I use, and why I use them. So first, um, just five reasons why I think there's a benefit to using color schemes. Um, and then I'll talk about what they are. But first is they, they simplify color, probably more important than anything, because color is hard. And uh, the more we can simplify it, the easier it is to understand. Uh, second, it allows you to focus on values, dark and light. Because the important thing about um, color is not being able to copy color from a photograph. It's getting the right value of the color, how dark or light it is. Whether you match it or not is really secondary. You may want the ability to be able to mix a color that you see. But the important part is getting the right value. That's more important than local color. Uh, next, it makes you think outside the box with color. Uh, grass isn't always green. Skies aren't always blue. We get stuck uh, copying color from photographs and it becomes a rut. And they all look the same. Um, but it makes you think outside the box of color. Number four is it always creates color harmony, which is always good in a painting. You don't want your colors to be uh, discordant. You want harmony in there. Um, and that's because you're using a certain set of colors, a very limited set of colors. Number five, it's a good color exercise. I think it's a lot better uh, than mixing uh, color charts because color charts are kind of disembodied squares of color. But if I do a, a small, tiny landscape and I do it like five or six different times in different color schemes, I'm learning a lot more because I'm painting in context to or in relation to landscapes as opposed to just squares. So, and it forces you to uh, mix colors that you wouldn't ordinarily use. You know, color schemes are a certain set of colors from the color wheel, and a lot of times it's colors that you wouldn't ordinarily mix together, which also goes to the point of um, thinking outside the box. So, color scheme is based upon the color wheel. Um, we all learned that in the third grade about the color wheel. In case you didn't or you've forgotten, blue, red, blue, and yellow, not a very good triangle there, those are your three primary colors. All the colors come from red, blue, and yellow. Uh, so I can use this color scheme, red, blue, and yellow, and white, and mix everything. So it's a very safe color scheme. Uh, but th those are the primary colors. Secondary colors is if I mix those together. If I mix red and yellow together, I get orange. And... Um, red and blue together I get violet and blue and yellow together I get green. So those are the secondary colors. Then the in-between colors are when I mix the two colors. The red and the violet I get red violet, violet and blue I get blue violet and so on. So that's the color wheel all based upon red yellow blue which is a triadic color scheme. And that's the first color scheme we're going to talk about. I tend to use just three triadic, um, split complementary, and analogous. And I'll go over what each one is. Triadic is any three colors on the color wheel that is equally spaced apart. Red, yellow, and blue is a triadic color scheme. And they are equally spaced apart. There are three, there's three colors between each color. So that makes them equally spaced. That's a very, again, very safe color scheme. Red, yellow, blue, plus white, I can mix everything. I can copy every photograph exactly. Not that I want to, but when I start using different color schemes, then that goes out the window because suddenly the sky can't be blue because I may not have blue in my color scheme or grass can't be green, I may not have green. So. Another triadic would be, let's take uh, yellow-orange, red-violet, blue-green, plus white. Again, three colors between each color, so equally spaced. And that's a triadic color scheme. Then it becomes a bit harder. And anytime you can change that up, uh, let's go yellow-green, 
red, orange, blue, violet. That's a triadic color scheme. Three colors between each color. And with the tri any triadic, I still have some kind of yellow, red, and blue. It just gives me different results that I wouldn't ordinarily think of doing. I come up with different colors that I wouldn't ordinarily plan. And that helps you learn about color. So yellow green and this triadic color scheme, yellow green is my yellow, red orange is my red, and blue violet is my blue. So I'll come up with <clears throat> somewhat of a red, yellow, blue color scheme, but not quite. And it'll look different. It'll have a little bit more edge to it than just using the same old colors all the time. So that is triadic. <clears throat> Good one to use. Another is split complementary. And by complementary, we mean the colors that are opposite of each other. Red and green, orange and blue, yellow, violet, red, violet, and yellow, green. They're the opposite. So they, they're really jarring when you put them next to each other. If I do a painting of yellow and violet, a lot of yellow and violet in it, it's going to be, it's going to be more, uh, more movement to it. What am I trying to say? Not movement. More action to it. It's not peaceful. It has more emotion to it. Maybe that's, it's more jarring when you have complementary colors next to each other. And that's what you're after. Now the split complementary, the color scheme, is when I take, let's say red and orange, or red and green are complements, but in a split complementary, I will go to the colors on either side of the green. And not use green, but use the yellow green and the blue green and the red plus white, and that's my split complementary. So any complementary color, blue, violet, yellow, orange, I pick maybe one that I want to kind of dominate, and then I split it. So instead of yellow, orange, I use orange and yellow. And again, plus white. And you might think, well, that limited set of colors, especially a split complementary, it's almost just two colors. How are you gonna have any color variation? But you would be surprised if I have a blue, violet, orange, and yellow, split complementary color scheme, again, plus white, I can use just real subtle changes of any of these three colors and come up with just numerous different color combinations. Violet dominating, a little bit of yellow, touch of orange. Violet dominating, a little bit of orange, touch of yellow. And I can use that same one and just subtly change a little bit of one color or two colors. So you can have just countless color combinations. Plus, you add the idea of using white, different values. That is also a color change. When I create a different value of any color I mix, that's a different color. And that can be infinite also, just adding a tiny bit of white, a lot of white, a bunch of values in between creates a different color. So if I do a painting of blue, violet, and white, I mean, it's one color, but every time I change the value with white, that's a different color. It may be a boring painting because it's all different values of blue violet, but it is a different color just by adding white. So you do have infinite possibilities with three, four, five colors. Uh, you can do a full painting easily with, with three colors plus white. So that is split complementary. The other one is tri um, analogous. Analogous is getting one color family, like red, and picking three to four colors that are on the red side. I mean, I could do red-violet over here to orange, or red over to yellow-orange. Some um, places I've read, it's just three colors. So it'd be like red, orange, red, red, orange, and orange. That would be my three colors. Uh, or I could add four. Some have five, but I, five is a, is a bit too much, I think. I think three or four is better. Then one color is a complement, adding blue. It could be blue-green, one of these two, but just one of them. And that's the complement to mute your red family of colors. I can mute it to make, keep it stronger, get different variations. And, you know, blue and red gives me, when I mix them together, gives me a totally different color than blue and orange, or blue and yellow-orange. 
Uh, so I use that blue to get variations of these four reds, or at least colors that have red in them. So anything like yellow could be the family I want to use. Yellow, yellow, green, green. Maybe include yellow, orange. Then the complement would be violet. Or red, violet, either one. Doesn't matter. Probably violet would be the better. It would be more in the middle of those four colors. And an analogous color scheme is much more peaceful than a complementary or split complementary color scheme. Because again, complementary colors jar each other. They vibrate against each other. Here you're using harmonious colors. They're all next to each other on a color wheel. So they're a lot more peaceful. It's the complement that you use to gray on the other side that gives it some variation. So peaceful paintings like Early in the morning before the sun comes up, you might have more of a, a blue color scheme with a little bit of orange or red orange to kind of mute it or harmonize it together. Um, sunsets can be more of the yellow or the red family with a little bit of blue or blue violet to give it some mutability there to create some more muted or grayer colors. Also that complementary color on the analogous can also give you dark colors because if I use red analogous colors, those are all pretty light. So the blue also will mute it, but it can also give me some darker darks. So it helps there value wise too. So more peaceful, easy going paintings. Not that they're, I'm not saying it, it's not as good as a complimentary. It's just not as, doesn't have as much emotion to it. It's, it's, it's again, a lot more peaceful. So those are the three different color schemes, triadic, uh, split complementary, and analogous. Now this is a 16 by 20 canvas board and I've taken one picture and across the top, I have uh, done three different color schemes. There and there, another image and down here. So I wanna look at each one of those separately, but this is a good exercise. 16 by 20 divided up into nine squares. The top three is one photograph that I do three different times and so on. And um, they're not very big. I don't know, maybe three by five, maybe not even that much. No, they're not even that, that big. So you, they don't have to be big. You're just practicing to see how the colors work together. Or you can do them a little bit bigger, six by eight um, as well too. But this is a good exercise to do. And um, it also helps to have this. This is a color wheel that has, this is the back of it, that has the split complementary wheel here in the triadic. Doesn't have an analogous. Um, and then a tetrad, which I don't use. But it's real good. To have. You can spin it and pick out different combinations for the triad and the split complement color scheme. And on the other side is just more stuff. But that's a good one. It's called The Color Wheel. Uh, I think it's thecolorwheel.com. You can buy them online. They come in different sizes. Really helpful. Because I cannot picture, and you'll see as we go on here, I'm trying to figure out color schemes. I can't picture the color wheel in my mind and pick out a color scheme. I have to have it in front of me. This is my palette that I use. Titanium white, cad yellow light, yellow ochre, cad orange. Cad Red Medium, sometimes Cad Red Deep, Burnt Sienna, Lizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue. This is a Violet, um, Deoxazine Purple with white in it. It's called Violet Gray. I get it from Dollar Rowney, Georgian Paints. I kind of like it a little better than Deoxazine Purple because it's lighter. Uh, but Deoxazine Purple is good too. Some Violets are a bit more in the blue side, some are a bit more in the red side. This one's a bit more down the middle. Then Viridian, or sometimes Viridian Hue. It's a little bit stronger than Viridian. And then Thalo Blue. And with these colors, I can mix any color on the color wheel. And that's my colors I use for the different color schemes. So if I want a blue violet, I could take Ultramarine Blue, which has a little bit of red in it. So technically, it's a bit of a blue violet, but not enough. So I would add just a small amount of crimson, and that would give me a blue violet. Or I want a yellow-orange, 
take my yellow, add a little bit of orange to it till I get kind of a yellow orange. I don't want an orange, I want a yellow orange. So you have to be pretty specific. Blue green, Viridian's a blue green. I can add a bit of blue to it and make it a bit more on the bluish side, but still blue green. Thalo blue is more of a warm blue. So I could add a touch of yellow to it and make also a blue green with that. Some artists have definite colors that create definite colors on the color wheel. You can go by, you can buy a tube of yellow green, of yellow orange, you can buy a tube called some kind of bluish green, but you can also mix it with these as well. Now, this is the first photograph, and I'll show the different color schemes here. It's a good composition. Values are okay in the photograph. I can need to push some of the values in the background a bit lighter, but I want good composition, good values, and then insert that color scheme. You can focus more on the values this way. Now, again, these are small three by five inch. They don't have to be big, no detail whatsoever. Just seeing how I can work those colors together. This is the first one. And this is a, a split complement. It's blue, green, yellow, orange, red, violet. So sky's not blue, grass isn't green. I've changed things up. And again, the values are right. And it gives me just a different sense of color. This is a, a triadic color scheme, orange, green, and violet. So these are secondary colors, orange, green, and violet. Again, sky is more of a, a greenish color, the violet and green. Violet with a little green in the hills to get it kind of muted. Violet and green in the dark trees. And then violet and um, orange and green in the foreground here. So a lot of variations. Third one here is an analogous. It is uh, orange, red, orange, red, and blue, green. So I just have three reds and then the blue, green. A little more on the peaceful side. See the orange here for the bright highlight. The darks are the red orange with the blue green. But again, the colors harmonize, gives me a different feel than these other ones, but it's all the same color scheme for that photograph. So here's another photograph. It's in Wyoming. A lot of blue and green in here. You know, green trees, blue sky. So the first uh, color scheme will be triadic. Blue, green, red, violet, yellow, orange. And I'm not going for detail. I'm not going for a finished painting. I'm just seeing how the colors work together. And that gives me the variation of colors there. The next one is a split complementary of red, violet, blue, violet, and yellow. And you can see I keep the more of the uh, blue, violet, red, violet in the background. And I could come up with different colors using the same color combinations, but they all kind of harmonize. They all make me think outside the box. Quite frankly, I kind of like this a lot better than I like that. Now, obviously the drawing in the photographs, a lot more accurate, but these color variations really give me different ideas on color. Here's another one here of triadic color scheme, violet, blue, and yellow orange. I'm still thinking dark and light, my values. I'm still thinking temperature. I've got my shadows and distant mountains cooler and my light area is warmer. Just different color combinations. Now, I don't have the photograph that I used for this one anymore, but composition is good, values are good, and I can use whatever colors I want. And this is a split complementary of blue, violet, blue, green, and orange. Still getting the effect of sunlight. I'm just changing up the colors, a bit more dynamic looking. Here's a triadic of red, violet, yellow, orange, blue, green. Again, different views of color. And I'm mixing colors I wouldn't ordinarily mix, so I'm learning as well what my colors will do when I mix them together. This is a split complementary of violet and yellow, so it's violet, yellow, orange, yellow, green. So instead of yellow, I got yellow, orange, and yellow, green with the violet. Again, I'm using temperature, contrast, cooler shadows, and warmer light areas and trying to get the values accurate, but color-wise, I'm changing it up. And this has a totally different feel than the last one. Same subject, same values, same composition, just using different color schemes. You learn so much by doing that. Um, now to look at some bigger paintings. This is 11 by 14. This is orange, violet, and green. So these are secondary colors. Triadic color scheme, orange, violet, and green. So. Sky is more of a, a, a violet, distant colors in the mountain back here are violet with a little bit of uh, yellow and orange to mute it. Orange and yellow, tiny bit of violet in these trees, not much, tiny bit to mute them slightly. So you can see I'm di different color combinations. 
My coolest shadow will always be more towards the violet. So violet with a little orange, violet in the distance. Shadows are more on the violet side. And here is a blue-green, yellow-green, and red. So it's a split complement. So my red is alizarin crimson, which is really red violets, but green and yellow green, blue green and yellow green. So using the blue green with a little bit of the crimson gives me somewhat of a violet in there. Now this is a triadic color scheme of muted colors. Um, ultramarine blue, well it's, it's, it's blue, red, and yellow. But my red is burnt sienna, and my yellow is yellow ochre, and my blue is ultramarine blue. So it's very muted. It's earth colors. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna, or earth colors. So they're, they're more muted, and uh, so the colors aren't as bright. So it has more of a tonalistic feel to it, more muted colors. Nothing, no colors really jump out. Now I could come back with a brighter cad yellow with a touch of blue somewhere in a field down here, or a lizard crimson and a little yellow, or a little blue for a stronger violet, and a spot or two to make it really stand out make that area really stand out, but harmonizes real well and it's very muted. So using muted colors in your color schemes is another option as well. But you can see how this makes you think about certain colors, how they react together. If you just, as an exercise, do two or three of these a month where you take one photograph and do two, three, four different color schemes. You really learn a lot about your color. And do them small. They don't have to take up much time. This is a John Carlson. Looks also like maybe a muted triadic color scheme of, of an ochre, some kind of red, English red, or some kind of uh, Indian red with blue. Yet I don't know that. Could be black he used instead of blue. But it is a very limited palette. It looks triadic, red, yellow, blue, but muted colors. And this last one, uh, mine here is primary triadic. So here I use a triadic color scheme of red, yellow, blue, which, which, which was ultramarine blue, cad yellow light, and I think a lizard crimson. And a very safe one. In other words, I can mix everything, but it's still, it's three limited colors that I have to mix everything with just those three. And that really forces you to learn something. You can't use a limited palette or a uh, color scheme and not learn something about color. Pick one photograph and do it two or three different times, different color schemes, and I think you'll learn a lot. Well, I hope that was helpful. And if you want to learn more about values in painting, then watch this next video, Adjusting Values in Your Photograph.